All right, welcome to the last video of this tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to focus on the Pose Manager, which is a plugin from the Reolution guys, the creators of Character Creator 4. And as I said in the previous video, it's a great tool because it allows you to keep track of a bunch of different poses for your characters and creatures, as well as maintaining all the details from the subdivision levels. So I'm going to cover how you can send your poses from CC4 into ZBrush and keep track of those. So the first thing I'm going to kind of like uh, recap, this is the character that we have already rigged, and this is inside a Character Creator 4, of course. So if I go ahead and click on Edit Pose, I have this rig that allows me to do this sort of thing, which is fantastic. Let me just undo that. I just wanted to show you that this is exactly where we left off. And again, we have the four subtools that make up this character. And in ZBrush, I have exactly the same thing. I have my four subtools. And of course, I'm using my custom UI, but that shouldn't uh, stop you from following along and I would mention everything that I use. So the only thing or the only palette that you need to um, be aware of is the C plugin palette. So what I'll do is I'm going to open up this left dock, click on the C plugin. And from this icon here, just drag that to the left. And this is the plugin that I'm referring to, the CC Pose Manager. So this is a plugin that doesn't come with ZBrush by default, but you can download it for free and just install it like any other plugin in ZBrush. So let me just open that one up and you'll see it has the Character Creator logo there and it's very, very simple. So what I'm going to do is click on this relink to add a pose. So I'm going to click on that. So what ZBrush is going to be doing now automatically is go through all of the subtools and create a new recording layer or a sculpting layer at the highest subdivision level. So that's why it's a pretty cool thing, right? Once it's finished and you can see that by, um, you know, it has the orange in the switch, meaning that it's on uh, and the rest of the, uh, let's say the settings of this plugin are grayed out or the buttons. Now I can go to Character Creator 4 right? And I can pose my character. So I can literally just do this. Let me just do uh, a simple pose, nothing too extreme. Uh, I just want to show you how it works and maybe lift the foot up. I'll do a proper pose in a bit. I just want to show you how this, how cool this is. And then I'll do something a bit more, a bit more interesting, maybe in a time lapse, because this is, it's kind of like boring to watch just moving pieces, but I think you get the idea. Uh, let's say that I'm happy with this. Let's close that up. So we have a pose in here. Okay. So what I want to do is go through my subtools, right? I'm going to select them all, go to my go see button here and get this window. So depending on how you've been working, you might see this already as a relink, but um, in my case, it just shows create, but I don't want to do that. I just want to remind you that that's not what we are looking for. We want to relink things. So I'm going to click on relink or in the dropdown and select relink right? And the current pose, that's this pose that I have right here. And I'm going to make sure that this is enabled as well and click on go Z. So now ZBrush is receiving that pose from Character Creator 4, right? So that's, I mean, it's an ugly pose, but it worked perfectly fine. And as you can see, we have, you know, the highest of division level right here. In your case, it might be easier to just see it from the geometry palette. So we have all the subdivision levels, right? So what I want to do now is click on this relink to add a pose to switch it off. And that's it. So Zeroes went through the process of stopping the recording layers of all of these pieces. So just to, um, and so that you can see kind of like the behind the scenes and you don't have to really know any of this, but I just want to show you how it works. If I select the head, for example, and scroll down to the layers right here, uh, you'll see that there is this CC pose one, and this is enabled. This is basically what this plugin is doing, is saving that pose at the highest subdivision level in a layer, right? So if you go ahead and try to sculpt now that the, the pose is created, you'll get a pop-up message saying that you cannot do it because there is a layer. So that's kind of like an important thing to uh, to highlight, but I'm going to show you how to work that out or how to um, you know keep sculpting if you wanted to. Now, the cool thing is that you can see this pose one. Um, I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it ugly pose just for the time being. Click on rename or let's call it temp pose, just a temporary pose. And you'll see it's going through the process of renaming all those layers. If I select something like the suit, scroll down, it will be renamed as well. And it's all good to go. OK, so this is all, you know, great. <laughs> but if you want to go back to the previous pose, right, to the kind of like the A pose, all you have to do is turn this off. And there you go. So we now have 
this in an A pose or a T pose, depending on how you set it up. And you can keep continue um, sculpting and adding things and playing around with poses. Of course, you see that there's a lot of different poses that you can add. So if you want to add another one, you don't necessarily have to click this or get out of this pose. You can leave it on and click on relink pose again. But I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to click on relink. Again, this big switch, big button here is just so that we can set up ZBrush to receive a pose from CC4. All right, so it did that. And if you want to check if it is finished, um, you can just go to the layers and you'll see there is a new layer recording for um, this pose. Let's go back to CC4 and I'm going to show you something else that is pretty cool. So I'm going to go to content and I have some poses here or some animations. And because we already have a rig that works, I can just go ahead and click on this relax walk, drop it in there and then use the timeline here. By the way, if you don't see the timeline, you can just grab it from the window in here. So um, animation player. All right. I'm going to find a nice relax pose like this. This is not too bad. And I like that. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Select all my pieces, go to the Gozi, make sure I relink all of those things, click on Gozi, and I'm going to let the software work its magic. So I think that was it. <laughs> so it recorded, everything works nicely. So I'm going to click on relink to add a post just to switch it off. And that's it. Pretty simple. And in the same way, we can just go ahead and click on rename. And I'm going to call this one walking. Wait until ZBrush um, updates all of the new layers or renames all the new layers. And now we have a walking and a temporary pose. All right. And the other really cool thing that you can do with this plugin is that not only you can save and store your poses, but of course, when you um, when you have a rigged character and you deform it in this way, there might be issues that you want to tweak or that you want to alter in ZBrush. Like you actually want to sculpt, um, you know, different folds or different wrinkles or maybe just uh, fix some inter intersection of geometry, that sort of thing. So you can also select the pose that you want to edit and edit the pose within ZBrush. So this is the equivalent to manually have to go through every single subtool, select the right, um, the, the right layer, enable the editing or enable the recording and start um, updating it. So that this plugin takes care of all that manual work. So let me just show you how that works. So right now I have my uh, walking pose. In fact, let's just go ahead and create another pose just to show you how easy that is. And because before I turn this off, so I'm going to show you that it just works either way. So when I click on relink to add a pose and see is just going through the process of the same thing. This time it automatically turned off the walking uh, pose that we had. And now it's ready to receive a new pose. So let's go here into Character Creator 4. Um, you can also use the player here in the Motion tab. Just click on this drop down, and we can go maybe for um, let's go for Tune Posing maybe, or let's just find something interesting. Maybe uh, Performance. Um, let's go for Male Posing. Let's go for that. So we can scroll through the timeline and find a nice pose that we can edit. These are not very extreme. Actually, let's go to content and find something a bit more interesting. All right, maybe just sitting down, chilling. Maybe the character is at the headquarters of a spaceship or something, <laughs> and it is just sitting in there. All right, so that's a little bit more interesting, and perhaps I want to tweak this hand. So I started with this template, which is called a Reclining Bench. I'm going to click on Edit Pose. I'm going to select the left hand of the character and then just move it that way, maybe down a bit so that he has the, the hand over his knee or leg. So this is all right. And what I'll do is I'm going to take the clavicle and just push it forward a bit just so that, or the shoulder actually, just push it forward a bit. And that gives us a little bit more room to position this without uh, so much stretching of the arm, just to keep the relaxed pose really. I usually spend a lot of time in this in this part, just making sure that it feels natural. Uh, but I want to leave something like this. Just want to show you. I want to intentionally leave a, an intersection right there, just so that so that I can show you how you can edit that later. Uh, but you don't have to. That's my point. You can actually, you know, select that finger and just change it, which is, I think is that one. Um, but yeah, you can just do all of that from here. Um, all right. So I just edit that pose slightly. Maybe I actually want to see or have this guy looking that way. I think it's been more interesting. Yep. Yeah, so now I have what I need, starting from a simple, um, you know, pose that comes with character creator. I edit that pose and now I'm going to send it to ZBrush, relink it, click on Gozi. 
and now we have the post right here. So I'm going to click on relink again and that will add a new switch. So we'll have the temporary post that was the kind of like the ugly one. We have the walking one and we have a pretty cool one now, uh, kind of like chilling in a in a reclining chair or a reclining bench. All right. So I'm going to call it I'm going to call it sitting or actually um, spaceship. I just want to name it something relevant for me so that I remember why I created this pose. And I'm just like thinking that this character could be sitting in some area in the spaceship. So I just rename it like that, but you can do whatever you want. All right. So this is great. Now I can switch in the pose manager. I can switch to walking and all I have to do is click on this um, switch and I just wait until ZBrush and the plugin does its thing. And we have, you know, we can close this up. It's just layers and managing layers, uh, but it does everything automatically for you. So if I select the, the suit, I can go into the lower subdivision level. I'm going to turn on, um, in fact, let me just turn off the texture just for a second so that you can see. So we have the lowest subdivision level and we also have the highest subdivision level with all the details in the post. And that's what makes it this workflow so good and you know so easy to manage and especially it's non-destructive so if I at this point I don't want this pose and I just want to go back to a T pose all I have to do is turn this off and it's just going to give me the simple pose that I had at the beginning let's go back to the spaceship so I can show you how to edit uh, what I'll do is I'm going to enable it so I can have my pose in there which is great and I'm going to click on edit pose so again what this plugin is doing behind the scenes is dealing with uh, sculpting layers. So in this case, it's going to find the layer that uh, of each one of the subtools that you have in your project, it doesn't have to be four, um, and it's going to find the layer that has this pose and it's going to re-enable the recording. So now I can go to this finger right here um, and perhaps what I'll do is I'm going to select the hands and I'm going to go to the lowest subdivision level because it is a lot easier to manipulate um, a lower amount of vertex. So I'm going to enable the polyframe so that you can see what I'm doing and also turn off the, uh, the, the texture. And yeah, I'm going to go into solo mode. I'm going to use this masking lasso, uh, which you can select from holding the control key, pressing the uh, brush thumbnail and selecting it. So this is the mask lasso. And what I'll do is I'm going to mask this area like so, kind of like to protect that area. I'm going to invert that area and just refine that masking a little bit and invert it again. Hold the control key and click on the finger once. Let's invert it again, holding control and click on the canvas once and blur that mask once again by holding the control key and clicking on the mask once again. So all I did there was just creating a, a nice fade, something a bit more subtle between the masked areas and the unmasked areas, right? So let me also turn off the color of the polyframe or let's just leave it as it is actually. Yeah, you could see the, the dark color is the masked area and the unmasked area is this. Now I'm gonna bring in my uh, Gizmo 3D, place that in an area that I can easily rotate things around and I'm holding the Alt key to um, reset the pivot and I can do the same thing with the rotation. So I can hold the Alt key and rotate this around just so that it matches kind of like the, the way that this uh, finger is going to be rotated. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's get out of solo mode so that we can actually see the issue, in this case, the intersection in here. And I'm just going to rotate things a bit. And because I had everything masked, this uh, finger is being rotated um, by itself. Perfect. I want to clear the mask, right? And not only that, let's go back. Let's leave it with the texture on the high subdivision level. So again, we retain all the details. Um, let's say that maybe around here, around the neck, I want to tweak things. Right? Maybe there's a little bit of stretching. I don't know. In this case, I think it looks good to me, but in case you want to do it, let's say, let's select the, the head and let's go ahead and use the move brush. So I'm going to select the move brush. I'm going to filter by the letter M, then move. And I'm going to go to the lowest subdivision level. Again, a lot easier to manipulate uh, a few vertex. In this case, you see, it's not too bad. I want to also turn off symmetry. And I'm just going to tweak this. Right? And this is the type of thing that I would do uh, towards the end. So I would use Character Creator 4 to essentially give me the basis of the pose that I need um, and kind of like take care of the, of the hard part of this, of this process or the hard steps of this process, which is rigging the character and getting the, the essential pose right. And then in Zbrush, I still have the ability to um, come through and manipulate the, the pose and tweak it a little bit. So I think that looks a little bit better. Um, if I go to the highest subdivision level, let's turn off polyframe. Let's, let's say that 
there this is working but I also want to add maybe some additional stretching to um, to go with this pose I can totally do that so I'm gonna go with the damp standard brush so pressing B D S and to solo mode as well I'm just gonna go through and add these lines in here just to suggest that there's a little bit more stretching uh, which I think helps kind of like if he's rotating the the head towards the left um, there's gonna be some pulling of the maybe from some from the wrinkles or the or the neck I'm pretty sure you know what I mean <laughs> um, yeah I think that that works actually I'm gonna go with a custom brush called the HR Geiger Cutter um, this is it's kind of like the same brush but it's a lot stronger so that allows me to do these things a bit fast and that's from a, a set of brushes that you can find at the zbrushguides.store there we go maybe you go with the standard brush as well and just add a little bit of volume to these uh, folds or wrinkles just to enhance that pulling of the skin so let's get out of solo mode and you'll see that that pulling in there so I just did all of this to show you two things right um, one that you can actually sculpt and add things in here as well as in the lowest subdivision level because you have subdivision levels you can tweak things um, easily like moving fingers and things like that so that is the entirety of the workflow um, and of course, just to wrap it up, I'm going to click on Edit Pose. And again, what ZBrush is doing or what the plugin is doing is acknowledging all those changes within the uh, recording layer that we had. And now we have the ability to, uh, again, have subdivision levels. I can send everything to the lowest subdivision level in this pose. Let me turn on Polyframe, right? And I can send them all to the highest subdivision level. I can click on Edit Pose and continue editing uh, the pose. All that good stuff. Right. And if at some point, um, just to recap, if I turn this off, right, I have three poses saved and I can have lots more, as you can see, um, I can go back to my A pose. And this is one of the great things about this workflow. If you remember in previous videos, I mentioned that it's not absolutely necessary to have your textures ready. And that is true um, because at this point, once you learn how to use this uh, pose manager, what you can do is create all your poses and you still have the ability to keep your character in a T pose. So you can have your poses uh, or sculpt your poses and then send the T pose, the one that you can see right now on the screen, and send it to uh, something like Substance 3D Painter, create your textures with symmetry and and then uh, bring them in into any software that you want. But um, that is pretty much all I wanted to show you. There's a couple more things, but they're pretty self-explanatory, which are uh, delete other, delete the current pose, or delete all the poses. So if I go to temp pose, that was the, um, the ugly one that maybe I don't want to keep. Just want to show you <laughs> that is there. Uh, if I don't want to keep that one, I just need to enable it as I have it right now and click on delete. And that essentially is going to go through the process again behind the scenes uh, using layers to delete those layers. And that's it. So now we have the walking pose and the spaceship pose that I not only um, added or created, but I also edited so we don't have any intersection here. We have some wrinkles happening and all of that is sculpted at the highest subdivision level. So hopefully this clears things up a bit. Um, I'm going to do one final video where I'm going to do a wrap up of the entire uh, workflow really, really quickly and also uh, jump into a time lapse where I'm going to pose my final character for presentation. So hopefully this additional video for the pose manager is useful and I'll see you in the next video.